Our first patient was expecting a normal day. And now they've ended up in accident and emergency. Let's see him get fixed. This is Accident and Emergency in Manchester, the place for all medical mishaps. And what on earth's happened here? Has he superglued his hands to his nose? Nose on, this is eight-year-old Max, and the problem is not with his nose. A few minutes ago, I realised that my lip was so all swollen. Did he say he had a swollen lip? Yes, look. Ooh, it is swollen. But why are you holding it? When it touches my teeth, it hurts. It hurts if it touches your teeth. Got it. So how did Max's lip end up so large? Well, it's all a bit of a mystery. Max was having a normal day. He'd been to school, like normal. And then afterwards, he'd been swimming, like normal. And then he came home and had one of his favourite meals. Mmm, meat pie. Yummy. And then he sat down to watch his favourite cooking show. This is making me hungry. But just as they were getting to dessert, Max felt something funny going on with his lip. It started to tingle. And then it grew. And it grew. And it grew. Ouch! It really stung when it started going really big. I bet. And with such strange swelling, let's open the case of Max's mystery mammoth mouth. Has he had any allergic reactions in the past? Yes, yeah. he's got allergies to peanuts and white fish. OK, and he's not had no nuts or anything near him. So Max doesn't think he's eaten nuts or white fish, which he's allergic to. But with symptoms like this, he's taking a medicine called antihistamine, just in case it is an allergic reaction. Well, here's someone who can bust that lumpy lip. It's Dr. Sara Syed. So was it sore? Was it tingly? Stinging. It was stinging, was it? Yeah. OK. Did you feel like your throat was getting tight or anything? No. No. Dr. Sara needs to give Max a thorough examination to find out whether or not he's having an allergic reaction. Oh, can you just say ah for me? Ah. Uh... If he is, the biggest concern is that it could get worse and cause his throat to swell up, making it hard to breathe. OK, is that sore at all? No. OK, so there's no swelling at the back of your throat, which is really good. Luckily, Max's throat and airways are clear. But what about his lip? Is it from an allergy? It looks like some form of allergic reaction, OK? Um, just with there being the swelling and this tingling, it kind of all fits in with that picture. The good news is that the antihistamine has started to work and another 20 minutes later, Max's lip is looking smaller. How are you feeling? Better. Yeah? High five, antihistamine. What exactly has made him have that allergic reaction is uh, a little bit of a mystery. It seems like his immune system just responded quite strongly to something. It might be that Max has developed a new allergy. To try and find out, he'll return for an allergy test in a week's time. Take care. We'll be back later to find out how he gets on. <laughs> It's not just emergency teams in hospitals that are ready to help you. I know! There are medical crews all over the country on standby 24-7. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. This is a state-of-the-art rapid response vehicle. It can get to the scene of a medical emergency in minutes. And I'm heading out in it to show you what it's like to be a life-saving paramedic. Jan can take 10 to 15 emergency call-outs in a day, and a new case is just in. We've had a 999 call to see a 32-year-old man who's got a rash and swelling in his mouth. Now, that sounds to me like an allergic reaction. So I've got my camera in the front, Eric has got his camera, and we're going to be getting you as close to the action as possible. Only a couple of minutes later, and we arrive at our destination. Hello, is it Alan? Yeah. Take a seat, my name's Jan. What's the problem today? I thought I had like a reaction to something. Uh, your tongue was swelling, your throat feels a bit. Tight, have your mouth wide as you can. But, uh... Um, so your tongue feels big in your mouth, does it? Yeah, I mean, it feels quite tight. OK. I was a bit short of breath, but... Alan is experiencing something called anaphylactic shock, an extreme allergic reaction. 
Tigger and Sasha look concerned. So is there anything that you're aware of that you're allergic to? <laughs> Nothing that you know of? Although Alan's being pretty brave, he has a life-threatening condition. His lips and tongue can swell, and that causes problems with breathing and swallowing. So it's actually really important that Jan's here. What I'll do is I'm going to give you an injection into your arm in a second <clears throat> with a drug called adrenaline. Now, you may have heard of adrenaline. It's actually a hormone that your body makes. What it's doing, in Alan's case, is constricting the blood vessels in his tongue, in his lips, and will actually reduce that swelling. In cases like this, it can be life-saving. I'm sending um, Alan in the hospital today just so that I can make sure his tongue doesn't swell again. So the drugs I've given only work for a short time. How are you feeling, Alan? Do you feel like it's working? Yeah, I do feel a little, a lot of swelling is going down. Yeah. An ambulance has arrived to take Alan into hospital. You'll be right walking out, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Fine, yeah. It's potentially a life-threatening problem that he had, and Jan's really fixed him up. You could see how much the swelling in his lips had gone down, and that happens all the way down his throat and into his lungs. So that's really, really good news, and they'll be able to treat him really well in hospital. see how Max is getting on. Let's head back to accident and emergency. Back in Manchester, eight-year-old Max has returned to hospital for an allergy test after his lip swelled up like this. Wow, it was a whopper. Max had been to school, then swimming, and then had dinner at home. But all of a sudden, his lips started to swell up like a big balloon. So this is what you look like normally but the cause of his mega mouth is still a bit of a mystery. Max is allergic to peanuts and white fish, but he hadn't eaten either of those things that day. However, Max has a theory. Uh-oh, Mum's in trouble. Mum said she was eating nuts, and she touched me there on my face. <laughs> I might have to hold my hands up to that, because I do eat nuts at home, but we do keep them out of his way. Well, it could be his mum, but it could also be something new. Enter allergy specialist nurse Sarah Allard. And gosh, she's a terrible speller. No, Zand, she's putting a variety of allergy samples onto Max's arm to see which ones get a reaction. And it's not just food types. This is dog. She's also testing for things in the environment, including dogs, cats, grass, and tree pollen. Hold on. Now Max just has to wait. The best thing to do for itches is to blow. It takes 15 minutes for the reaction to show up. A white bump shows there's an allergy. <laughs> wow, we've certainly got a few there. So our tests today have said, yes, you're still allergic to white fish and peanut. But what we've also learned today is that you are allergic to cats. So was Max playing with cats on the day his lips swelled up? Er, uh, no. And you are allergic to grass. Ooh, was he rolling around like I do when I'm allowed? No, Zand, he wasn't. So we're still none the wiser about why his lip grew so big. Well, Max still has his theory. I think it was mum. <laughs> your mum? That's nuts. Well, we'll never know. But you can put your arm away now, Max. Bye. 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 <laughs> on Operation Ouch, we've been hitting the hospital wards to show you what goes on. Today, Chris is on duty in the allergy clinic. Prawns, cheese and nuts. What do these three things have in common? Well, obviously, they're all best served dipped in chocolate. Apart from the nuts, that would be disgusting. But foods like this are also the main cause of a problem that some of you may have. I'm talking about food allergy. An allergy can cause the body to react in extreme ways. These pictures show some allergic reactions on the skin. But what is an allergy, and why does our body do this? This is consultant Dr. Viba Sharma, a specialist in allergies. She'll tell us everything we need to know. So, Dr. Sharma, what is an allergy? An allergic reaction is when somebody's been given something that they do not agree with and their body reacts to it. What happens when someone gets an allergic reaction? Those that are not severe will cause rashes, they might cause swelling. A small proportion of people can have severe allergic reactions, and then they get very poorly. This is Haroon, who has a suspected milk allergy. When I have some um, something with milk in it, um, I get a bit itchy on my body. And this is Holly, who has a suspected nut allergy. 
So the last time I had peanuts was when I was 18 months old and I had an extremely big reaction to that. They've both come into the clinic today for allergy testing. We do this test that's called a challenge test. The allergy challenge test means that Haroon and Holly will be taking small bites of foods Dr Sharma thinks they're allergic to. They'll both be monitored closely by the medical team just in case they start to have an allergic reaction. Holly's trying chocolate with nuts in it. She hasn't eaten nuts for 11 years. So how's it going down? I've just had my first bit and so far so good. Haroon's had one bite of pasta with milk in the sauce. How's he doing? It feels um, like I'm getting a bit itchy. Haroon's itchy skin could be the sign of an allergy, but nothing major is showing yet. Time for a second bite. Anything happening? Second one now and I'm still all right. In fact, after a few more bites of her dreaded food, it's good news for Holly. I've had six pieces of chocolate with mixed nuts in and with no reaction. They confirmed to me that I'm not allergic to any nuts at all. So it's thumbs up for Holly. As you grow older, it's possible for the body to build up a tolerance to some allergies. So, one down, one to go. How's Haroon getting on? He's trying another spoonful, and now an even bigger spoonful. The doctors are building him up to a full meal to see his reaction. He started itching a lot. A bit itchy there. And this is definitely an allergic reaction. When this happens, your body releases chemicals called histamines, and this is what makes you itch. The more histamines, the more severe the reaction. The histamines released not only make Haroon itchy, but also cause little bumps on his skin called hives. These bumps are formed by fluid leaking from the blood vessels in the skin, which means one thing. I'm allergic to the milk in the pasta. We know Haroon's reactions have been really bad in the past, so he's had breathing difficulties which have required a lot of treatment. Uh, but thankfully on this occasion he's got this rash that has alerted us, so um, we're going to now stop the challenge. He's had the medicine and we'll observe him for a little bit longer to make sure that this reaction settles down and that he's not going to develop any more symptoms. So although the body can adapt and overcome food allergies, the allergy challenge has confirmed Haroon's body is still sensitive to milk. He'll need to avoid eating anything with milk in it to make sure he doesn't have a nasty reaction in the future. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. This is a rapid response vehicle and it's on standby 24-7 to respond to whatever emergency calls coming in. Today, I'm going along for the ride and guess what? You're coming with me. Jan can take 10 to 15 emergency call-outs in a day and a new case is just in. So we've had a 999 call to a 53-year-old lady who's injured her ankle. So it could be anything from a simple sprain to blood loss, severe pain, and maybe some other cause for the fall that could be life-threatening as well. So we've got to get there quickly, find out what's going on. The call has taken us right into the centre of town. Hello. 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 Is it Linda? It is. What's happened? What? Tripped over the man I Oh, on. just the edge of that raised platform yeah. there. Okay. So was you knocked unconscious at all? No. Have you hit your head or the back of your neck or your back at all? No. What have you injured? My knee and my ankle. OK. Are you able to bend your knee at all? I do, but my ankle hurts. Your ankle hurts when you bend it? Okay. Yeah. Press down on my hand. Push down as hard as you can. Where does that hurt when you push down? On my ankle. On the outside? Yeah. Linda's ankle is clearly causing her a lot of pain. So it may just look like Jan's feeling her ankle, but in fact, she's feeling it in very particular places. There's a set of rules called the Ottawa Ankle Rules, and they help you decide whether they're likely to have broken a bone. So Jan's trying to figure out which bits are tender. That'll tell us whether she needs to go to hospital. Yeah, I'm going to need Amber back up for this patient. She's unable to wait there, um, needs an X-ray. Using the Ottawa rules, Jan has decided that the ankle is probably broken and Linda does need an ambulance. The moment she's quite uncomfortable, we're managing to keep her warm, but she can't walk on that leg. So we need to get her to hospital and get her an X-ray. She can be treated from there. 
It's important to keep it still so that if she's got any bones that are broken, if the edges rub together, it can create a lot of pain and it can create some bleeding, which will make the ankle worse as well. You're doing it, that's it. Well done, darling. Are you able to twist around a little bit? There you go. It's really good that Jan was able to assess her really quickly, get her an ambulance and get her to hospital where she needs to be. And once there, the doctors discovered Linda's ankle was broken and it was soon fixed. The team in the emergency department thought they'd seen everything. But they weren't expecting this. Sand! What's happened? In Sheffield Accident and Emergency, 10-year-old Neve has a dodgy ankle. What happened? I fell down some stairs. Uh-oh, that's not good. Let's find out more. Well, Neve had just been in her maths class and was heading for lunch. Oh, I've got a great maths joke. Go on, then. Why was six afraid of seven? I don't know, Zand. Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. Very good, Zand. Now, getting back to the story. Neve was on her way to lunch after maths. <clears throat> yes, Chris. All of a sudden, she fell down some stairs and hurt her ankle. Oh, no, Chris. That's no laughing matter. Ouch! How's that ankle feel now, Neve? Can't walk on it at all. Well, never fear, as Dr Helen Newsom is here. Oh, yeah, that is quite swollen, isn't it? That'll be a yes, then. Do you have any pain up here? It starts to hurt really bad about there, doesn't it? Can you wiggle your toes at all? Oh, dear, those toes don't seem to be wiggling. What's the verdict, Doc? Worst case is that she's broken it. And one of the things you can do with breaks is you can damage some of the nerves or some of the blood vessels. And she might need to go to theatre with the orthopaedic surgeons and have it fixed. Best case scenario is that she's sprained it. So it's off to X-ray to see what the damage is. Dr Helen delivers the results. We managed to do a little break or fracture through this bit here and one through this bit here. Ooh, double break. So what's the plan, Doc? We admit you for a couple of days. Right. Put you up on the ward and elevate that foot. It's really important that we get that swelling down. So what we need to do is we need to get her admitted for a couple of days just so we can make sure that leg is nicely kept up in the air, make sure she doesn't develop any complications. Probably not what you wanted to hear, is it? As Neve's ankle is so swollen, she's having a back slab cast. She needs a cast to keep the fractured bone stable, but it only goes halfway around to allow for the swelling. It's really heavy. It's heavy. How's that ankle feeling now, Neve? Feels a little bit better with it on. So it's a thumbs up and off to the ward for a sleepover, where Neve will have to keep her leg up for a couple of days, as it's important to get the swelling down on that ankle. Find out later how she gets on. We're in the park, the perfect place to spend an afternoon, whether you're sitting, having a picnic, walking with friends, or playing football. Sorry. But a day in the park can also be a day of danger. You could fall asleep without sun cream and get sunburned. Ooh, dangerous. Ow. You could get lost and stumble into a forest full of hungry bears. Phew, danger averted. Or you could accidentally forget your money for ice cream and have to watch other people enjoying theirs. Play football then. Yeah, all right, let's do penalties. Oh, hang on. I have got some money after all. Oh, we're just using the ice cream van. <laughs> Ooh, a minor injury. So, what should you do if you sprain your ankle? A. Roll around on the grass, crying, I'll never compete again. B. Apply something cold to the injury for no longer than 10 minutes. Or C. Buy the Ankle D-Sprainer 2000 and hope it works. The correct answer is B. We need to reduce the pain and the swelling with a cold compress. How's that, Zahn? Well, it's better. But I'm still not happy. I know something that'll cheer you up. Come with me. Cream. My clothes! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> mm. 
So remember, if you sprain your ankle, then put something cold on it for no longer than 10 minutes. And if you're worried, tell an adult. In fact, lots of injuries can be helped by putting something cold on them. It's particularly useful for sprains, strains and pulled muscles. This is because it reduces inflammation, stops swelling and can help with pain. So don't forget this cool fact. Nice ones, aren't? Nearly half a million people come into accident and emergency every year with a sporting injury. Here's another one. Eight-year-old Mason is in accident and emergency with his mum, big sis and dad. He's not too happy, though. Because he's got a dishcloth on his leg. Nose aren't. Because... I hurt my ankle. Let's see it, then. My ankle's like a ball. And Mason can't bear to look. How did it happen? Check it out. Mason was trampolining and jumping as high as he could. Higher, and higher, and higher. Is that out of space? It gets worse. His cousin was on the same trampoline, going as high as he could. So guess what happened next? They left Earth orbit and flew to Mars. Out of space looks a lot of fun. Oh, hang on a minute. This doesn't look good. You're right, Zand. Here's what really happened. They smashed into each other, toppled down, and Mason twisted his ankle. Ouch. Oh. He's just a typical boy, isn't he? Good as gold. I'd be amazed if it's not broke. Here's the very man to tell you, Dr Christopher Beavis. Take a peek, Mason. You're in safe hands. Dr Beavis checks the sensations in Mason's foot, as sometimes with a bad break or bad sprain, swelling can compress the blood supply and nerves, but he's happy that they're all OK. We're going to get an X-ray just to make sure there isn't any bony damage underneath. Um, personally, I think this is a sprain at the moment, but obviously the X-ray will tell us a bit more information. So I'll get that sorted. We'll know what we're dealing with. So it's X-ray time for Mason. Although the doc thinks it's a sprain, you never can tell. That's a pretty good picture, Mason. Well done. Dr Beavis is checking the bones in Mason's foot. There's just a small fragment of bone, if you like. It isn't conclusive, but because of the symptoms and the size of his ankle, we're going to treat it like it's a clinical fracture. So the doc is treating it like a break. I hope you like the crutches, Mason. I'm kind of hoping I get crutches, so I'll be popular at school. What's he like? So we'll get you back to a fracture clinic in the next day or so. Never mind that. Yeah, what about the crutches? Does Master. he keep his weight off it? Yeah, keep his weight. We'll give him some crutches as well. You see how he gets some of that. Result. But wait. There's no guarantee you get to take the crutches, because if you can't handle the crutches... Oh, we can. You can handle yeah. the crutches. Yeah, okay. I've been practising okay. okay. for okay. when this day comes. Excuse me, practising? That's keen. But at eight, Mason's a bit young for crutches, and even though he could do with them, first he has to prove he can use them. Got what I wanted, crutches. Not yet, you haven't. We don't really see him again once we give them to the kids, unfortunately. But, uh, but yeah, they seem to find them exciting. I'll be the second one in my school to have crutches. First one in my class. And what's so good about that? Girls. You'll have girls? I'll have all girls just going, oh, you're all right, you're all right, you're all right. And I'll be like, yeah. Playing it cool, Mason. Nice. nice. But first, Mason has to take his test. They're not taking my crutches away. Join us later to see if he passes the test. We're giving you exclusive access to an accident and emergency department. Let's meet our first patient. In Sheffield, accident and emergency, seven-year-old Logan's all bandaged up. What happened, Logan? I put my arm. Oh, how did you do that? Playing football. Playing football? Let's see exactly what happened. Logan was at football camp learning new skills. He can dribble, head the ball and score goals, just like Lionel Messi. Then it was penalties and Logan's turn in goal. He saves it. Brilliant. Up steps the second player. Logan saves again. But why is he holding his arm, Chris? Let's look at that again. The ball came rocketing in. Logan saved bravely, but look at his wrist. It's bent right back. Ouch. Here to save the day is top doctor, Reddy Illavala. Hi, Logan. You all right? First, he needs to check Logan's injury. Ow. Ooh, bits all there. It's very important that there's a good blood supply to the tips of Logan's fingers. 
Can I just touch your thumb? Is that, is that okay? I will feel it. If he's got any numbness or pins and needles, then uh, we need to manipulate like straight away in the emergency department. Once he's happy that Logan's hand has a good blood supply and is not numb, Dr. Ilavala sends him off for some x-ray pictures that will reveal the damage. First one, then two x-rays. Another satisfied customer. With the x-rays all done, what's Dr. Ilavala's verdict? It's broken in, in two places and it's also gone backwards as well. Ooh, double ouch. Time to uh, break the news. Zand. It, it definitely needs to be, you know, manipulated into place and they might have to put some wires and things like that as well. So Logan has to have an operation to fix his broken arm. But first it's put in a temporary splint to keep him comfy. All done, Logan's moved to another ward where he'll spend the night. Find out later how he gets on.